I would like to practice by taking a look at these redox reactions. We can tell that they're all redox reactions because they're not double replacement reactions. In none of these five examples do I see two pairs of couples dancing together. Let's take these reactions. Let's identify what type of redox reaction it is. Let's predict what the products would be. And then let's write a balanced equation. In this reaction, I just have two elements, sodium and chlorine. So I can't replace anything. There's no combustion happening here because there's no oxygen. And I can't break anything down into simpler things. So this has to be a combination or a synthesis reaction. When I take Na and react it with chlorine, well, the product is going to be sodium chloride. Na with a plus one charge and chlorine with a minus one charge just makes NaCl. So now the problem is that isn't balanced. I have two chlorines on the reactant side, so I'm going to have to have two chlorines in my product, which means that I'm going to need to have two sodiums as well. And so this is a combination reaction producing sodium chloride. This one, there's only one reactant, so it can't combine with anything, it can't replace anything. This has to be a decomposition reaction. When I take my aluminum oxide, Al2O3, because aluminum forms a plus 3 and oxygen forms a minus 2, when I break that down, it's going to break into aluminum. Now aluminum is just plain old Al. It's not a diatomic element. It's not Al2. It's just plain aluminum. Oxygen is a diatomic, so pure oxygen is O2. Those are my products. Now we have to balance. I have three oxygens here and two oxygens here. So I could balance them with a fraction, or I can make a total of six oxygens. If I put a three here and I put a two here, that balances out my oxygens. And then I can finish by balancing my aluminums and putting a four right here. So in this reaction, I have a compound, copper 2 nitrate, and I have a lone element, magnesium. This is a setup for a single replacement reaction. I've got a couple dancing, the copper 2 ions and the nitrate ion, and I've got the magnesium as the loner off the side. Magnesium is going to swoop in here and break up the couple. And the question is, who's it going to start dancing with? Will magnesium want to dance with the positive copper or the negative nitrate? Well, magnesium is a metal. It wants to form a positive charge, so it's going to replace the other metal, copper, here and start dancing with the nitrate. We have the Cu with a 2 plus charge bonded to NO3 with a minus charge and neutral magnesium to start. The magnesium is going to form a plus 2 charge, so that's just going to be MgNO3, 2, and then that's going to leave the copper. And the nice thing about this is the equation is balanced as written. We don't have to add any coefficients in front. Everything balances in a 1 to 1 to 1 to 1 ratio. C3H8 is propane. This is the gas that's used in a gas barbecue grill. Propane, when it combines with oxygen, is going to create a combustion reaction. Propane is a hydrocarbon, and when we react a hydrocarbon with oxygen, we make the same products every time. So we have our C3H8 and our O2. And the products of these combustions of hydrocarbons are going to be CO2 and H2O. You get the same products every time. The trick is the balancing. So if I have three carbons on the reactant side, I want to put a three in front of the CO2. And when I have eight hydrogens on the reactant side, I want to put a four in front of the H2O. Now, that means I have six oxygens here and four oxygens here, so I have a total of 10 oxygens on the product. So if I'm going to balance this, I need to put a 5 in front of the O2. So that is our balanced combustion reaction. Once again, I find myself with a compound, potassium bromide, and an element, fluorine. So this is going to be another single replacement reaction, where the lone element is going to come break up the compound. The fluorine is going to start dancing with either the K or the Br. Now, fluorine is a nonmetal, so it's going to want to start dancing with the metal. Fluorine forms a negative charge, it wants to react with the positive potassium. 
if I take my KVR and my F2, the potassium is going to bond with the fluorine now. Potassium has a plus one, fluorine has a minus one, so I'm just going to make KF. And then that's going to leave bromine by itself. Now bromine is a diatomic element, it's one of our halogens. So that's going to be Br2. If we're going to balance this, well, I need two fluorines, so I need two KFs, which means I'm going to need two KBRs.